All right, everybody, welcome back to another video here on Financial Friends. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to Financial Friends, we talk everything business, finance, and investing related. So thank you for joining. And if you're into that type of stuff, go ahead, hit the subscribe button down below and join the friend group. And go ahead, smash that like button, no matter who you are. It just takes one second and it helps push the video to more people. I greatly appreciate your support. So the topic of today's video, the thumbnail, the title, it all, retail, not looking super hot and in specific Walmart and Target not looking super hot. The mixed bag that we're getting and the little bit of confusion and odd sort of storyline is that Home Depot and Lowe's are doing just fine. Uh, today Target reported earnings and it was not pretty. A huge miss on EPS. The stock down 25% or $53.67. Uh, you could see this massive just drop straight down today. It wasn't pretty. Walmart stock has been falling over the last couple days too. They reported a day before Target reported down 17.2% just this week, fell 6.79% today in sympathy, kind of in regard to exactly what Target had reported. People are like, oh my gosh, well, if Target's doing it, then the outlook can't look super hot and I own Walmart, so let me just sell my stock too. So you kind of have this just snowball that's going downwards. Home Depot and Lowe's, we're not going to touch on them really the remainder of this video, not till the end. Um, they're kind of in a league of their own. They're a little bit different than the Walmart and Target comparison because you can directly compare Target and Walmart. That's what we're kind of going to be doing in this video, but you can only directly compare Lowe's and Home Depot to themselves. Now, we're also going to be talking the consumer, and this is the big running theme of this video and of really the, the earnings that we're seeing now. Can the consumer keep up with inflation and can Target and Walmart not raise prices on the consumer to help them continue to consume even while there's inflation, even if it hurts their bottom line, which I think we can all tell it is. Target and Walmart are not making as much money as they should be, but they're still seeing demand from the consumer. Now, why is this happening? What is going on? If you take a look at Target's earnings for this Q1, you can see that they actually outpaced themselves in sales from last year to this year. But the actual income that they received from that, the bottom line has shrunk. So they took more money in and they didn't get as much money to keep. What does that tell you? It tells you something in the middle changed. What changed? How much things cost for them. Same exact thing happened with Walmart. This screen is a little bit wider instead. I wish it wasn't, but it is. Um, you can see their net sales from the three months ended April 30th, 21 versus 22. 22 is higher. It's higher by 2.3%. But what happens on that bottom line operating income? It shrunk and it shrunk by 23%. So again, what is going on? In the middle, the money that they got, then you have the middle, then you have what they get to keep. The middle has changed. What's the middle? Costs and expenses. You can see here that cost of sales rose. Operating, selling, general, and administrative expenses rose. Same exact thing here with Target. Cost of sales up by 10.4%. Selling, general, and administrative expenses up 5.6%. So the theme Target is not raising prices on consumers. Now, some of the prices are naturally going up, but it's not Target or Walmart choosing to gouge you. Instead, they are taking on those costs. They're assuming kind of the risk in all of this. They're taking the hit, and very clearly, they have taken hits. I mean, down $53, 25% in a day, and 17% over the week, Target and Walmart are feeling the pain right now. Now, how about Home Depot and Lowe's? What's going on with them? Well, not so much. They actually both had a pretty much beats. Home Depot did beat on, on earnings, excuse me. Lowe's uh, a little bit closer, but they still did beat, just not as big. Why is that? Well, home, home improvement, improving your home, buying things for your home, building in your home, DIYing your home, it's still in. Why? Because homes are scarce. People aren't just moving around. And if they are, they're settling down because home prices are very, very high and there's not too many houses right now. So maybe instead of moving, you fix up your home. 
Maybe you buy a new grill, maybe you buy a new lawnmower, right? People are still investing and buying in their home, but when they go to the grocery store, they're not doing that. Why is that? Well, they're not buying as much or they're not buying the same things in the case of Target as what they were because gas is expensive. Other food, other necessities are expensive. If they got a new vehicle recently, they're feeling the pain. That was gas expensive. So because everything else is becoming expensive, people are not buying the same things at Target and they're not buying frivolously. You can see here the CEO, Brian Cornell, went on CNBC this morning. He said they're shifting from buying TVs to buying luggage. They're still spending dollars, but they're spending it differently. Now, why should Target care, right? You're probably sitting there asking yourself, who cares? They're still buying things from Target. And that's very true. However, we are seeing massive supply chain issues. It takes either way too quickly or way too long for Target and Walmart to get their products. When consumers are now switching from left to right, instead of buying TVs, they're buying luggage. Instead of buying um, as much food as they're buying or something else they choose to buy for birthday parties because they haven't been to those recently, whatever it might be, now you have Target stockpiling items that nobody is buying. Their inventory actually went up over this period. Now, you might sit, think there, or sit there and think, sorry, oh, well, isn't that a good thing? They have more products. You can see here their inventory slightly raising. No, that's not good because that means you didn't sell it. And if you didn't sell it, you don't have money. Um, and I'm not sure, actually, let's go ahead and take a look while we're making this video. If we saw the same thing with Walmart. I'm actually pretty interested to see where that would be. You could see here change in inventories. Um, inventories. It looks like I'm assuming that this is for them. This operating income it is up. So they are now holding on to more inventory as well. Again, you might assume here's inventories from 2021 to 22 to 22. Again, yes, inventories are up. Again, that is not a positive thing for these companies. Why? Because you have to sell things to make money. If you have the inventory, all of you've done as the store is pay for it and put it in a warehouse somewhere. You need customers to buy it. And when they're not buying the same things that they were buying, that's not good for you. In general, the consumer is still strong. The consumer is still buying. We can see, again, we, we noted this at the beginning of the video, sales are up. People are still spending money but Target and Walmart just don't get to keep as much money. Walmart did note, however, that they do see some change in the consumer. Instead of buying whole gallons of milk, they actually noted that they're buying half gallons of milk. They're skimping over clothes in favor of food. If they are buying clothes, they're kind of buying the cheaper versions or the less expensive versions. They're getting store brand lunch meat instead of pricier ones. And we did see ticket sizes fall in some of these places. We saw ticket sizes rise in Home Depot. Why? Because inflation, these things are costing more money. And of course, consumers are just buying them. So Home Depot and Lowe's still looking strong. Target and Walmart, not so much. Now, the big question is, what am I doing? Right? What, what should you do as an investor? Now, you need to take a little bit of a look in the mirror. You need to look at these, which are the earnings reports and kind of decide for yourself. Are these companies in a spot where you still feel comfortable investing in them? If the answer is no, then don't invest. But if you invested in Tar Target, you invested in Walmart or Home Depot or Lowe's for a very specific reason or subset of reasons, and none of those have changed, the values have not changed, this is a massive opportunity for you to keep buying. Now, Home Depot and Lowe's, uh, I'm not sure how their prices move today, uh, but after earnings, they did rise. So now those stocks are more expensive. Target and Walmart, uh, not so much. A 25 and a 17% decline, sale, discount, respectively. So if you bought Target or Walmart on some form of fundamentals that have not changed, be in for a wild ride. I think over time, the consumer is going to get weaker. These higher costs are going to weigh on them. They are not going to buy as much. They're not going to buy as frivolously. They're not going to buy as expensively. And as long as Target and Walmart can kind of shift around and navigate that, well, the easy answer is people are still going to buy from Target and they're still going to buy from Walmart. People can't avoid purchasing products, but can Target and can Walmart navigate the supply chain, navigate inflation and help aid consumers in a way where they still want to shop 
at Target and at Walmart and return to those stores over and over again, these companies will be perfectly fine. But their stock prices will fall in sympathy with other companies, even e-commerce companies citing that the consumer does not have as much money anymore and they're not gonna spend as frivolously on random things. Instead, they do have to put gas in their car and food on the table. Target and Walmart just so happen to one of them sells gas and the other does sell food. They both sell food. Um, so they're kind of in good positions as long as they can manage the one important thing. That's the thing in the middle, the costs. If they can navigate the costs, they'll be perfectly fine. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you were able to learn something. I know that was a ton of information at once. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking the like button, for subscribing, hitting the bell next to the subscribe button, and comment down below, how are you navigating this investing? Are you buying the dip? Are you selling these companies off? Are you just looking and kind of sitting at the sideline? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much again for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.